So the risk of communicable disease is not going to be over ever. Unless we are vigilant and we are actively doing research and finding new measures of control, new measures of management and things like that. Couple of more points I want to tell you. Whenever we talk about communicable disease, we always talk about the agent, the virus or the bacteria or the fungus or the protozoa, different diseases. There is hardly ever much talk on the host, host factors. And COVID-19 has shown it to us that host factors are as important as the agent, if not more. The other neglected infections that we want to pay attention to is trypanosomosis. And again, every year we get less than 100 cases. But when you have few cases, it's also very challenging for you to completely eliminate the disease. But we've been working on this as well in terms of trypanosomosis. And again, we feel confident that we can reduce these numbers how we can increase the immunity for individual person to be able to prevent the infection. Uh, definitely there are many, you know, uh, preventive measures, uh, including wearing masks or, you know, isolation and, uh, uh, you know, uh, washing hands with sanitizer and so and so. But, but that work in a certain cases in, in when you are uh, when you are need to go out and work, interact with the people, then uh, the immunity is the must, right? So that's why the vaccine has been so effective uh, rather than uh, you know, isolation and uh, you know, mask and protection, PPE and so on and so. And so as we gather at this prestigious full communicable disease scientific conference, and I must commend Dexilla for this, it's an excellent job that you're doing. Few academic institutions has a conference that ties to itself. And so this is something I really want to say, continue doing it, excellent work. So we have to always start with the sustainable development goals. Um, we live in a world that is talking about it. You know, up to um, 2000, we're talking about the millennial development goals, but past 2000, we're now looking at the sustainable development goals. And on the goal three, that deals with good health and well-being. Uh, one of the objectives is by 2030, we have to end um, the epidemics of AIDS, Dr. Tarot and um, tuberculosis, malaria, infection, neglected infectious diseases, waterborne diseases, etc. And so that's what uh, we aim for aspirationally um, to end TB by 2030. We, we do uh, advise patients, counsel the patient on the need to uh, eat well. Um, unfortunately, some of these patients are poor. They are, as I mentioned, they're substance users. And so the counsel would have to be more than talk. Um, the Ministry of Health, we have started in 2023 to provide breakfast uh, for the patient. So um, the patient, and it's like an incentive for them to come in and take the treatment. Remember, I, I mentioned that our treatment that we do is through dots. The health worker has to see the patient take the treatment. And to encourage the patient to take the treatment, we provide the breakfast. So either the healthcare worker takes the breakfast to where the patient is living, or the patient comes to the TB clinic to receive their medication and have the breakfast. In addition to that, we provide supplement um, as a nutritional support for those patients, um, nutritional boost, um, and we provide where possible hampers. We collaborate with the NAPS and we get hampers for infected patients. Um, you know, to provide some um, of the ingredients, the main ingredients, rice, flour, and so on that we would need to to think of you. With respect to regions, so in Guyana, we, of course, you know, we have 10 administrative regions. Of the 10, we have eight regions that are in, or in endemic or known to have filaria. And those are all the regions except regions eight and nine. Um, you see the table there, the information with respect to regions and on your, well, my right here on the left, it is the villages that 
um, is mostly affected or have high burden of lymphatic filariasis. And this information is take, was taken from our database. We have a lymphatic filariasis database, or the, sorry, a data database in our clinic. And this information was taken from there. So you can see the regions and those, the, the regions and the villages that are mostly, you know, known for pyloria and this is consistent with surveys that we will do from time to time. These are the villages that we will identify having higher burden of patients. Today I just wanted to highlight coming off of what this wonderful conference talking about infectious diseases and uh, look at some of the issues that are related to infectious diseases and highlight with some of the big concerns that I personally feel what we should look at that we may not think about it's often neglected. So what are the most issues that occur in pandemics? But to focus mostly on myths and misinformation, because these myths and misinformation cause severe problems during crises. And this is a truly sad story to talk about that a myth about syphilis uh, had a person behaving in such an uh, inhuman way because they felt that having sex with a virgin would cure syphilis and it's still around. It's still around even in the Caribbean and all of our country, but it's very troubling. The key challenges seen, firstly, Georgetown being an urban center uh, is known for uh, international trade and commerce. Since this is a center, there is increased infectious disease, transmission and spread. Um, majority of uh, the population living in Guyana is uh, through a, is near the coastline. However, some population is seen near um, the rural regions. This creates a disparity between availability of medical resources and as well as allocation of these to the community. This is how socio-economic disparities is a key challenge experienced. And when you have that factor and when you're studying, when you go on your clinical rounds, you might see one patient with one rare disease, disease like Lyme's disease. You got to go look it up. You got to do justice to the patient. That is very important. So at the end of the day, as a team, as a group, as a batch, you got to highlight these things. What you learn today is going to be your remembrance factor. It's going to be in your memory, right? So like this, when we come across this kind of practice in students, when we inculcate this kind of a, a process of you know, accumulating knowledge, 